name is Jonathan Haidt. I'm a professor at the NYU Stern School of Business. Um, well, e evolutionary thinking is one of the most powerful uh, ways of looking at any complex system. Uh, it's done wonders for biology, of course, and for a variety of other fields. Um, uh, it has not yet touched the world of business. We're in a business school. We, we're trying to teach people to be more effective uh, business leaders, to create complex organisms. Um, and uh, our thought here is that uh, a little bit of evolutionary thinking can go a long way uh, in a domain in which it hasn't been tried before. Uh, and so we just happen to have in residence here at the Stern School this year uh, luminaries such as David Sloan Wilson and uh, Jeffrey Miller. And we thought it, uh, it would be leveraging that advantage to invite a few more experts, invite people from the business community, uh, and just get together for a day of conversation and see uh, what, uh, what can you see about business that you couldn't see before you picked up the evolutionary lens. So I've always been interested in morality. That's what I study. That's what I do. Uh, in graduate school, I was reading various philosophers. I was reading people studying moral reasoning. Um, this was 1987, 1988. And it just felt kind of dull and dry to me. And then I read Robert Frank's book, Passions Within Reason, where he did an evolutionary analysis of why it is that we might have these emotions that make us strategically irrational, such as anger, love, shame, these things that let us solve commitment problems that you couldn't solve if you were perfectly rational. Uh, that was my introduction to seeing that human nature, and especially our social and moral life, makes a lot of sense from an evolutionary perspective. And then I also was studying cultural psychology. I was working with various anthropologists, such as Alan Fisk and Richard Schwader. And it became totally clear, you can't understand moral life unless you take a cultural lens and understand What's the culture's history? What's their economy? You have to look at cultural psychology as well. And at the time, cultural psychology, cultural approaches and evolutionary approaches were like enemies. Like, oh, are you going to be a reductionist? Or are you going to celebrate diversity? You can't do both. But beginning in the 90s, I, well, I hadn't read Pete Richardson and Rob Boyd until later in the 90s. But once I discovered all this work about how actually part of our evolutionary heritage is our becoming cultural organisms, uh, and so when I read, your, when I read uh, uh, your book, Darwin's Cathedral, which really put it together and brought in that essential element that I hadn't seen, which is groups. The idea that groups are real. This, to me, was the, the, the great aha moment, uh, that you can have uh, culture, evolution, and groups. They're not antagonistic approaches. They're all necessary. And well, if you're going to study business, shouldn't you be thinking about culture and evolution change over time and groups? I came here just because of a fluke. I simply needed a place to be in New York uh, when my last book came out, The Righteous Mind. Um, and I knew the, uh, the director here of the Business and Society program. So that was just a fluke. But evolution is full of flukes. So, you know, I'm a sort of a, you know, some animal got washed ashore onto an island. And it turns out the island's pretty hospitable. Um, and it happens to be an island that really, really values change, trying out new things, seeing what works. Uh, so I was welcomed here. Uh, they invited me to stay here at Stern. And um, I found that what I know about social psychology, moral psychology, and evolution all make it very easy for me to add a lot of value to the courses that, that are taught here, to MBA students and to undergrads, um, and to my research. I've been studying morality, especially in uh, college students. That's who I had access to. And now I have access to people who work in complicated organizations that are looking to improve and that want to innovate and take advantage of the latest discoveries to see if they can create more cohesive, trusting, high-functioning groups. What we're hoping to do here, it's not exactly a center yet, although if we get some sort of funding eventually it, it would be. What we're hoping to do here at Stern is be the host of conversations such as we're having today, uh, create a network of interested parties uh, such as you at Binghamton um, who will stay involved with us uh, forever, we hope, um, uh, just be a convening place where 
um, the people doing work on evolution that's related to business. People can come together, ideas get spawned, articles get written. We've already just ha had the idea of, of, of uh, creating a business section on this view of life. Um, so while I hope that Stern will get some credit for fostering this, this is not just an in-house job. We're hoping to change scholarship. We're hoping to create something that will be of value to the business community, that will help American businesses work better, and um, foreign businesses as well. But we're going to focus on what we have here in this country and this culture first, just to get it working. There's a line in my book where I say, nobody will ever invent a course, uh, that, uh, an ethics course, that makes people behave more ethically after they leave the classroom. And then I came here to Stern, and they put me in charge of teaching the ethics course. So I don't think that we can teach students ethics in the classroom, say, here's what's right and wrong. Here, work it out. Do some cases. And then expect them to take that and, and stand up for what's right when there are all these social pressures in the real world. So what we can teach them is ethical systems design. That is, teach them um, how to escape from certain ideologies that are prevalent. And we all see the world through ideologies. But the current ideology in the business world is the ideology of self-interest and um, incentive alignment. And if we're sending people out saying, just incentivize good behavior and punish bad behavior, well, that'll work sometimes. But there's actually a lot of research showing that leads to all kinds of terrible behavior. Um, so we've got to break out of that ideology first and replace it with more practical, research-grounded advice on how do you create high-functioning systems that behave, that behave ethically. So for example, Ostrom's eight uh, uh, principles for design of groups that can solve commons problems, things like that. If we can train our students to make them more effective at designing ethical systems, we can have a huge impact on business ethics without ever having to teach anyone.